welcome to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. I'm your host, Shannon Abels. And whether you're listening on your commute, exercising, working in the garden, or sitting down with a hot cup of tea or a cafe au lait, thank you for tuning in. Let's get started. Welcome to the 135th episode of The Simple Sophisticate. We are winding down 2016, and I was thinking about all the different topics that I was considering doing for the last episode of this year, and I couldn't choose, basically, which one to do. There were so many with regards to little life lessons that I wanted to talk about. And so what I decided to do is curate today's episode around the life lessons, the 10 life lessons that I was taught or that were revealed to me, I should say, in 2016. Now, it's up to me moving into 2017 to apply them, but I thought, you know what? What better way to reflect and then try to learn the lessons than to break it down and share them with you so that they could make more sense to me and perhaps speak to something in your life as well. But before I get to those 10 lessons, today's petit plaisir. I actually have two, to be honest with you, today because, well, it's the end of the year and we take off a week um, every year. We always take off the last week um, on the podcast. And so I wanted to give you something extra before I return on January 2nd. So stay tuned for those. Both are entirely different things to hopefully satiate your holiday vacation or maybe some free time, something that you might just enjoy doing that doesn't cost a lot of money at all. But now back to the topic for today's episode. We're going to talk about the 10 life lessons 2016 taught me. And I want to begin with a quote by Kat Lahr. She states, it is within the boundaries of reflection. We are able to become aware of insights that can lead us to understanding. And that's exactly what we're going to do today. So let's just dive right in. On the 1st of January, with each year, 12 months stretch before us full of potential to progress and evolve and to observe the magic that we could never predict on that first day of January. The year 2016, as I mentioned, has offered life lessons in abundance. Having filled three journals over its duration, I had a laundry list of lessons I could share with you today, but I've narrowed it down to 10. And I thought I would take a look at each of those aha moments that the year has provided and hopefully potentially help us provide with regards to learning these lessons, the magic for 2017, should we apply what we learned. So number one, sometimes what we need is the one thing we think we cannot possibly do. In previous years, I have shared the benefits of meditating and most recently written a handful of posts which included meditation as a practice worth incorporating into our daily routines. And I'll provide a link to all of those posts on the show notes. I know some, even my previous self, dismiss meditation, each for our own reasons. Mine in my 20s was that I couldn't possibly be still with my thoughts. It was, to be frank, frightening to do so. But as I contemplated this real fear as to why I wasn't investing in the practice of meditation, I realized it was the most important reason to begin meditating so that I no longer had to be fearful of my mind or frightened to experience emotions or ideas that I wasn't comfortable with. While I am by no means a guru or even a semi-proficient meditator, I do find I look forward to meditating, of which I try to do each day, but sometimes a few days each week are unable to find the time, something I am clearly still working on. I also find that rogue thoughts that still pop up from time to time no longer scare me. I have come to understand how to use the tools of observing and then letting go of thoughts, as well as being more present rather than arrested by worries about the future or anguish about the past. I had initially begun using Headspace, the free app, a couple of years ago, and then abandoned it, citing no need for someone to tell me how to sit down and be still with my thoughts. (laughs) However, after I stopped using the app, I also stopped meditating regularly. So with the inspiration from a friend who uses it regularly, 
I re-downloaded it onto my phone. The first series of 10 is free and you can just loop that series that's free again and again and again if you don't want to upgrade. And I have been meditating with the app for the past two months. This summer, as I mentioned in a previous episode, I meditated each day for about five minutes on my own without the app. And now with the app, I am up to 10 minutes. I know it's small, but for me, it's significant growth. There are other helpful meditation apps out there based on what you want. And my one of my go-to podcasts, the Positive Psychology Podcast, actually debriefs three meditation apps in episode 72. So you can kind of find which one fits for you. One of those three is Headspace. So my first life lesson of 2016 is sometimes what we need is the one thing we think we cannot possibly do. Number two, practice physical exercise that you love and that loves your body and your mind. Stepping back into a former method of exercise this past summer was one of the best decisions I made. For me, it was yoga. And while I stepped away for about a year and tried Pilates as a replacement, I soon realized it was yoga that had not only helped my physical body, but my mind as well. Most important was having instructors that were inspiring, encouraging, and warm. And I found that at the studio that I go to. Since August, I have been taking a vinyasa yoga class one day a week from one of two different instructors depending upon my schedule. Not only have I seen a return of flexibility, but also of calm and a quiet confidence that while not entirely due to the return of yoga, certainly was encouraged with my weekly practice. So whatever form of exercise you have seen results, positive results in, but also that you enjoy and is good for your mind. It doesn't cause angst. It doesn't cause worry or fear. Go back to it or really dive deep into it if you already are. And if you have, and you're already in that mode of exercise that it, that fits your mind and your body, just pat yourself on the back and say, Hey, keep doing what you're doing. It's working well. So number two is practice physical exercise that you love and that loves your mind and body. Number three, true friendship is a slow blossoming fruit. As someone in her 30s, having relocated to an entirely different town, the establishment of friends has been quite intriguing. On one hand, I find people are quite clear about what they can and cannot do, and I appreciate this honesty. As they have priorities, just like me, responsibilities, some have families, others busy careers, as they hold down top positions as they rise in the ranks. But due to these same reasons, finding the time to build deep friendships is hard. Some people already have their tried and true friendships, not necessarily wanting to exclude you, but not having the time to dedicate to an unknown entity as their time is limited, as is their energy. In other instances, due to people as they reach their 30s and 40s coming to understand what they want, who they are, and how they enjoy spending their time, connections with others who do not share a similar interest dash the potential of a friendship almost immediately. In 2012, the New York Times shared an article on just this topic, forging friendship after turning 30, and I'll include a link to that on today's show notes. However, what I have also discovered about friendships in our adult years is that it is a lesson in quality over quantity and patience over expediency. Let me explain. Initially, meeting people can begin by attending events of genuine interest. So you're striking up conversations with someone that already has attended this particular event because you have a shared interest, say, in wine or in France or in hiking or in dogs. So you already have one common interest and you may strike up a conversation on that particular passion. But even if you do have a similar interest or a common connection, the determination of someone as a friend, and there are a variety of different types of friends that enhance our lives and not all will be a person you will reveal your most intimate self to, still takes time. Spending time with others whom you have just met in many ways is like dating in that you need to give yourself time for the qualifying process. I don't mean you are judging or comparing, but in many ways you are determining what you can share. Remembering that ping pong analogy we talked about when we talked about vulnerability and boundaries, I'll provide a link to that podcast from earlier this year. Also observing how the neo, this neophyte relationship makes you feel while you're with them and after you've spent time with them. It has been my experience that it is not the initial meet and greet that will reveal if someone should be welcomed into your life, but rather a duration of experiences and in time, any masks or facades that were presented will be worn down and the true character will be revealed 
if they are wearing masks and facades. Some people are not going to. A lot of people won't at this point in their life, but some people still will. And then at that point, you will be better able to determine where or if that new friendship will play a role in your life moving forward. So number three is true friendship is a slow blossoming fruit. Number four, embrace a healthy tension when it comes to your life fulfillment. A regular YouTube series I watch for inspiration and boost of confidence and direction with the ever-changing tech entrepreneur path that I feel fortunate to be on is Marie Forleo. And it was this particular episode that aired just a few weeks ago that provided a significant aha moment after more than a year of contemplating a few big questions in my life. And I'll provide a link to that particular episode. But to debrief, the topic that she was focused on was lasting fulfillment. And she reveals that while we need to feel accomplished and successful in some of what we seek along the journey of fulfillment, we need not have accomplished everything. In fact, it is the tension that helps provide the fulfillment as we come to understand that we have the power within ourselves to cultivate the fulfillment we seek. It doesn't need to be external. In fact, it can't be. Everything we need and are seeking already resides within us. We just need to discover how to tap into it. And with the help of experts in the fields we are passionate about, we can do just that. So number four is embrace a healthy tension when it comes to your life fulfillment. If you feel like you're not where you should be yet, you're actually right where you need to be because you know what you want. You're on that path and you're going to make progress gradually. So just relax a bit. You're doing very well. Number five, it's okay to feel uncomfortable. My first experience with the French meetup group this year in Bend required of me to overcome great trepidation. First of all, I don't really know how to speak French that well when I went. I had just started taking French classes after a 15-year absence of learning the language beyond just my attempt on Rosetta Stone before I traveled there a few years ago, and I was not keen on not being able to know how to communicate with people. My first real date after truly being open to the idea of a relationship again was nerve-shakingly absurd, beyond what even I thought I was capable of. But guess what? In both scenarios all went well. Not well in the fairy tale sense. I still do not speak fluent French or even hold a conversation beyond the basic, hello, how are you? Nor am I madly in love with another, but in the sense that I was reminded that my nerves were for naught. I had worked myself up for nothing, but because I was unsure of how it would go, the events that would unfold were out of my hands. It threw me. This reality threw me. Maybe it was partially because I had undergone so much change in the previous year with the new move, the new job, selling my house after having de dedicated so much of myself into it, but it was also because it was out of my comfort zone. And as I wrote about a handful of years ago, we are all just one small adjustment away from contentment. Jennifer Aniston's quote regularly dances in my mind when I contemplate the idea of allowing myself to feel uncomfortable during the pursuit of something I desire. She stated... Everything you want in the world is just outside of your comfort zone. Everything you could possibly want. Great food for thought. So number five is it's okay to feel uncomfortable. Number six, the mind is malleable. One valuable lesson I have discovered is that my mind, unbeknownst to me until now, was not being utilized in a manner that was conducive to the life I have been seeking. Not entirely, at least. And the beautiful reminder after seeking out experts to help me understand more fully and completely was that I had the power to change the mental stories I had allowed to run on repeat for years and years and years due to conditioning, modeling, and an unhelpful perspective. The mind can either be our most valuable tool or our most destructive adversary. And if we don't understand why our mind falls into ruts that are not helpful, choosing to investigate them and then heal them and re redirect them is one of the best life investments we can make. So number six is the mind is malleable and knowing that is a huge relief. Number seven, old bad habits can be overcome. Speaking of falling into ruts, the ruts will always be there. Just like the Oregon Trail, it's still, there are still ruts of those wagons coming across the plains, coming all the way over to the west side of the country. They're still there. 
but we can overcome them. Perhaps bad eating habits may be negative default comments or thoughts that pop up or are uttered without even thinking about it. Whatever your unhelpful ruts are, we can reroute our behavior, but it must be conscious and we must repeat the new habits again and again until they become ingrained. And repeated posts, habits, how to cultivate, which ones are worth our time and investment for a better everyday life, etc., have been discussed in depth on the blog. Part of being successful with the shift in your habits is understanding that it is possible to overcome bad habits. But because these bad habits have such deep ruts, we need to be conscious that we don't fall back into them when trigger events take place. Simply being cognizant of that truth will help us avoid falling into them. So number seven is that old bad habits can be overcome. Number eight, there is a limit to planning our lives. As someone who is a planner and actually loves to spend an afternoon or an evening or a morning planning the next month, week, or even year, this life lesson had to repeatedly reveal itself before I accepted it as a truth. Now, not to worry, I am not going to encourage you to let go of planning. Absolutely not. In fact, when it comes to our financial stability, our careers, and our health, planning is an asset and the foundation of living well. However, when it comes to our personal lives and even the journey our careers take us on, we have to learn to do our best and then let go of the result. And due to a handful of experiences that took place this past year, I have come to realize that we may read books about how things should work out if we do this or that. But in the end, all we can do is be ourselves, do our best, and then step forward when opportunities present themselves. I have found the key is to have a life, an everyday life of our own cultivation, dependent upon no one else but ourselves, that we can truly love living. Because if we love the life we have built for ourselves, we are better able to simply let go of the result when it involves other people. Now, I've included a link to a handful of different posts on the topic of letting go. If you're interested, feel free to visit the show notes to find those. Number nine, bigger isn't always better. Over the past 18 months, I have lived in a significantly smaller house that I had prior to my move. And I honestly have never missed one square foot that I no longer have. I haven't truly thought about it except to contemplate the goal of owning again instead of renting. But even then, I am dogged in my pursuit of a small house, which is actually hard to find in Bend. The life I now have the opportunity to live is more alive, engaging, and fulfilling than at any other time in my life, in part due to fewer responsibilities I have to tend to if I lived in a larger space. Again, what I find to be revealed as true again and again is that it is the quality of life that resides within the home and within the life of the individual, not the size of the house, that determines one's true contentment. A clean home? Yes, absolutely. A house that is curated to the comforts and needs of the residents? Absolutely. But just as important as a roof over one's head that is warm and clean and inviting is understanding how to live fully and letting go of the unnecessary, the burden, the false have-to beliefs and must-haves. Quality over quantity again and again and again proves to be the path to true contentment. So number nine is bigger isn't always better. And the last lesson, number 10, contentment resides within each of us. Each morning I wake up and I pinch myself. No, everything in my life is not perfect. I still have doubts, fears, and wonderings about the future as we all do, but I don't let them percolate and muddle the truth that the life we can each create, the life I am creating and doing my best to share with you as I make the journey is something worth savoring each day. As was mentioned in point number eight, it is far easier to let go when we enjoy the life we've curated for ourselves, when we've tended to all that we do have control over, when we've realized that much of the angst we have about life is self-created and we are causing more problems and worry than is warranted. When we understand the true power we have within ourselves, we open a world of opportunity to live a more fulfilling and contented life. So number 10 is contentment resides within each of us. It does take courage to apply some, if not all, in some capacity, the life lessons that I've shared today. And as we need to remember, courage is not about eliminating fear. We can't do that. It is simply overcoming it. Fear will always want to step in and pull us back into the world of worry, doubt, and anxiety. But we have the choice to not give it its power. We have the choice to step up to the plate, put in the hard work, and dance with life. Because We also know some years we learn a weighty amount. 
Other years, we have the opportunity to put it into practice, and still other years are gifts to simply savor. It turns out 2016 may have involved more of the learning a weighty amount, but it also included aspects of the other two components as well. So is life, unfolding its magic so long as we participate. I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. You can find the links to all those different posts I talked about on the show notes, the simplyluxuriouslife.com backslash podcast 135. And just a podcast note, the Simple Sophisticate is taking its yearly one week vacation beginning the week of the 26th. The next new episode will be available on Monday, January 2nd. In the meantime, feel free to peruse the previous 134 episodes or stop by the blog next week for a year in review where I will share the top five episodes of 2016. And now to this week's petit plaisir. I have two I think you will enjoy. I'll see you in just a few. Welcome back. Now, since we're taking a week off here, our annual week break, I wanted to share with you something that many listeners email me about, and I have yet to curate this list. It's taken some time because I'm constantly wanting to make sure I offer something you sincerely enjoy. But many listeners, because this is a podcast, they ask me, well, what podcast do you enjoy? What podcast do you listen to? And as I've said many times before, a lot of the times what I'm listening to are topics that have nothing to do with what I talk about here on the podcast. I love food, for example. And so I have a couple of food podcasts that I listen to. And of course, I listen to a few fashion. So I do talk, I do talk about fashion here sometimes on the, on the podcast. But primarily, it's just pure pleasure. And I sincerely love listening to my podcast when I go on my walks and just kind of getting lost in the information, but also the hilarity or the different perspectives. And so what I've done for you guys is provide a link to the top 10 podcasts that I listened to this past year in 2016 and love and want to recommend. And I will provide a link to that on today's show notes. But if you want to go directly to it, all you have to do is go to the simplyluxuriouslife.com top 10 podcasts 2016. And it'll take you right there with a brief description of what it is that the podcast is about and what I most enjoy about it. I think you'll enjoy the variety um, and the quality. For the most part, all the, the quality on all these podcasts is, is top notch and um, you'll be in for a treat no matter which one you want to tune into as you're traveling this week or wrapping up 2016 and looking into the new year. Now for our second petite plaisir. Maybe you are not a podcast listener or maybe you like to listen to podcasts, but you also like to read. I have a wonderful fiction book that you will probably devour as quickly as I did. I came across it while I was perusing in my local bookstore last weekend. I needed a new book to read at night before I went to bed and I wanted something lighthearted, but thoughtful and not too daunting. And I found it. I didn't know really what I was getting myself into, but the bookstore owner, they had it as a recommendation and I read the description of why they liked it and I'm thinking, oh, okay, well, they did not steer me wrong. It is fantastic. The book is called Love in Lower Case by Francisque Morales and it is a, he's a Spanish author and it is translated into English, but it is an international bestseller that was released early this year. So back in January of 2016 and it is a story of a 37-year-old professor who lives in Barcelona. He is a German linguistics professor and he just, he's convinced that the new year that's coming upon him. So that's part of the reason I liked it too. The timing of it is just going to be like every other year. It's like, whatever. (laughs) And well, he was absolutely wrong. Thus the novel. And it all begins with the arrival of a cat who makes himself right at home in Samuel's apartment. In less than a week, this delightful novel was read and devoured by myself. And with its short topical chapters, I think you'll appreciate also the content. It involves a lot of different liberal arts discussions and philosophical questions um, and allusions to different um, poems and topics in the liberal arts field that if you are someone of that ilk or someone who just appreciates those interests, you will enjoy this novel even more. And not to, I'm not going to ruin the novel for you. I definitely am not going to ruin the novel for you, but I want to at least share with you that really is the deepest lesson that I took away was that just simply being more open to grasping opportunities when they present themselves. That's the key. 
that's the key that will make the difference. You don't always know, as we talked about in our list today, what's going to happen when you do your best or if you give something a shot. You don't know the outcome and you can't know, but you can't let the not knowing get in your way of trying or experiencing life. And so I'll provide a link to that book on today's show notes, Love in Lowercase. You may have seen it on my Instagram last weekend as well as I started reading it. Some of you were asking about it. Um, I highly recommend this book. You will enjoy it. I have a feeling it will be a delightful end to your reading experience this year. I hope you've enjoyed this week's Petit Plaisir, where each week ideas are shared to make the everyday all the more enjoyable. Tune in at the end of each Monday's podcast, where I'll recommend a book, a film, or a recipe, anything that's a simple pleasure to satiate your sophisticated taste. And I'll see you in the new year. Thank you for tuning in to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. For more ideas and inspiration throughout the week, stop by the blog, thesimplyluxuriouslife.com, or pick up the book, Choosing the Simply Luxurious Life, A Modern Woman's Guide. To stay caught up on the most recent podcasts, blog posts, and receive exclusive news as well as an extra dose of inspiration, subscribe to the Simply Luxurious Life's weekly newsletter, which arrives in your inbox each Friday. Friday to enjoy with a hot cup of tea or your morning coffee, just in time to jumpstart the weekend. Until next Monday, I'm your host, Shannon Abels. Bonjour.